Somebody said they like this song. Amen. I'm blind one eye, can't see out there. Call me a dreamer, cause I call it mine. Heaven, I don't care. Call me crazy, cause I'm homesick for it. Yet I have never been. Yes, I did. Call me a stranger, cause I call it mine. I know I, I don't belong. Just call me anything but when you call me, call me gone. Call me gone. I believe that you see you'll be breathing when you're left here without Jesus to call on. To hear him call me and call me gone. Amen. Oh, yeah. You believe that here tonight? Yes. Yeah. 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 I've come to church, I've come to get in, not to get out. Come on. Well, yeah. Brother Mike, listen to me. There's been a lot of things that I've been called in my lifetime. A man that's smart, so it's not been one of them. But I was smart enough one of those days. At 1135 in the Baptist Church to make Jesus the Lord of my life. Yeah. And because of that commitment, my friend, I've been laughed at, I've been put down, I've been talked about. But that's all right. That don't bother me at all. Because you can look at the old world and the shape she's in. Yeah. She's right. gonna one day gonna fall. Yeah. Yeah. But you know when Jesus calls my name, don't look around for me. I'm just like the old song says. When the road is calling us yonder, I'll be there. It'd be all right if Jesus come back tonight, amen. Yes, sir. I like this old song. I was thinking about mom. She's going on to be the Lord. Back in October. The other morning, I was just thinking about her. This is her favorite song. I'm sure she's probably hanging around somewhere. A million old songs that has been written about that home where the soul. It never dies And each time I hear one My heart has to shine Cause it lifts my spirit on high So many things Uncertain And too often Again, it lets me know this old world's not the place I belong. That's right, yeah. Go sing one more song yeah. about yeah. Yes, I still love that old fashioned sound. Just tell me once more. About that beautiful shore where I'll trace 
this old cross for a crown. We'll see about our loved ones. They're waiting all day. And someday we're gonna join in that road. Yes, amen. Oh, sing one more song about heaven so fair. My friend, when the sun comes up, it goes down for one day closer. Yes, amen. Every amen. moment that passes, my friend, All right. we're amen. that much closer to heaven, amen. my friend. I'm just a pilgrim passing through here in my That old hymn book holder on the back of your pew. It's been empty. It has been you see the songs about heaven in many churches that are no longer used. It's breaking my heart and the tears. You listen to me now. The choir has bought some new roads. They said they needed new songs. Now they're reading the words of the wall. Brother Mike, just to hear my dear mother sing, heaven, it's still worth it all. Amen. Amen. So sing one more song about heaven. Oh, I still love that old passion, that old passion song. About that beautiful show. We're on to take this old cross for a sound. Oh, sing about a loved one. Oh, we're waiting over there. And how someday we're gonna join in that road. Oh, sing one more song about it. Might as well go ahead and get all this stuff. You know why? Because I got a cold and I'm not going to last long. All right? Listen now. You can always find a steeple, a few religious people. There's a preacher on the front step shaking everybody's hand. A sign shaped like a Bible. Saying some revival But you listen There's a million dead churches Just to take up an acre of land This is what we need now. What we need is a soul Filling station Amen. Amen. A full service Open 24 hours a day Just a pump in that High octane A super salvation with a heart out of gas, a feeling for that fast get away. The Bible says in the moment of the twinkle of an eye, we're going to be leaving. Amen. That's pretty fast. But what we need some good old fashioned churches. Yeah. And listen now. Yeah. You can have the greatest choir. Dress them all in the white robe of time. That's softball team. Showing off all those trophies. But if the people's not for praying, there's not gonna be too many gonna be staying. Well, no one's gonna pull no water down. Yeah, so we need is a soul. Feeling 
section. A full service open 24 hours a day. Just the puppy that I obtain a super salvation. And when I haul out of gas, I'm feeling for that fast deal. What we need is a soul feeling station. A full service open 24 hours a day. Just the bumping and bumping and high octane a super salvation. With a heart and a gas, a feeling for that pass get away. With a heart and a gas, a feeling for that I read your home. Amen. Amen. Well, I got three days. I might need to save a few for tomorrow and the next day. I don't think I need this. My mouth is too big the way it is. Amen. <laughs> well, I was preaching up in the mountains. And uh, there's a little boy. We got some little boys in here, don't we? There's somewhere, there's one little boy. And I want all the little boys and all the little girls, I'm going to sing a song tomorrow night, and I'm going to have them help me, all right, at the very end. They've just got to say, okay. yeah, real loud. That's all you got to say. And I was preaching, and uh, there's a little boy. He's on the front row. And you know how little boys are, they're always going to bring a little toy or some description. He had a little car. And man, he's a driving that car. And the louder I preached, the louder he drove his car. And about that time I'd get to preaching, he'd go and look right, right dead at me. About that time his mother realized where he was. Thank God he was on the front row instead of on the back row. Man. And uh, about that time, he looked at me, and she came and grabbed him and threw her, her, uh, his, uh, him over her shoulder. And up the aisle, uh, they went, and about the second pew, he looked back and waved at me and said, Pray for me, preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that a blessing? <laughs> Some of y'all had laughed all week. I like enjoying myself when I come to the house of God. Amen. Amen. I like to have fun when I come to the house of God. Matter of fact, I like to have fun anywhere. Amen. I think God's people ought to be the happiest people in the entire sure. world. Right. Amen. Amen. I mean, we are going to heaven. Amen. Amen. Sure. And matter of fact, I couldn't go to hell if I tried. Amen. Amen. I'm going to heaven with the hammer down. It's right. Amen. Amen. Wide open. That's right. And by the way, when Jesus comes, the Bible says for us to occupy till He comes. Right. Yeah. That means... From the last time that he gave me an assignment, I'm supposed to be right there until he assigns me somewhere else. Man, right? Yeah. I'm not supposed to let people or anybody else move me from that position. Right. Man. Occupy right. is a word that is used in military, and it means to keep your place until the captain gives you orders. Yeah. I'm just waiting for God to give me a few more orders. Right. And I hope my next assignment will be heaven. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles tonight, turn to the book of John, chapter number 20. <coughs> and when you find John, chapter number 20, stand for the reading of the Word of God. In honoring not of me, not of this building, but honoring God's Word. It is the most powerful book on the face of the earth, first Amen. of all. Amen. It is a supernatural book. Amen. You say supernatural in a Baptist church, everybody thinks they're getting ready to have a healing line. <laughs> Oh. Amen. Oh. You say Holy Ghost in the most Baptist churches, it's oh. scared them half to death. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But I do believe in the Holy Ghost, first Man. of all. Amen. And I do Amen. serve oh. a supernatural God. That's right. Right. You're Amen. saved, my friend, right. supernaturally. Right. Man could not do that, my yeah. friend. Amen. Your mother, your father, your cousin, your grandpa, your grandmother, none of them could do what the Holy Ghost of God can do. And he did it supernaturally, my friend. Amen. Right, right. You'll not get that on a CD. You'll not get that in a book. If uh, if you get born again, it'd be 
by the Holy Ghost of God converting you and through the conviction power of the Holy Ghost and by the blood that was shed at Calvary. Amen. 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 Right. John chapter number 20. John chapter number 20. I'm tired. I drove six hours. And I'm getting old. And I can't drive. I can't drive six hours and not be tired. Some of you young boys might do that. But I can't do that. I'm old. I feel real old. Because I got these young boys right here in front of me. And I look back here at John. And John, ain't, he ain't, I ain't seen him in about six, seven years. He ain't changed. <laughs> Somebody, I mean, you don't get this. If you don't see a fellow, at, le at least they should have some gray hair somewhere. <laughs> I think he cut all his out. John chapter number 20. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to preach to you tonight. And I'll be like Liz Taylor said to her last husband, I'll not keep you long. <laughs> John chapter number 20, verse 1. In John chapter number 20, verse 1. The Bible says in John 1. Chapter 20, verse number 1. If you have your place, say amen. 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 The Bible says in John, chapter 20, verse number 1, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, early. It was yet, it was yet dark unto the sepulcher. And seeth a stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, and They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and the other disciple, and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together. I, 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 I just, I, I, I can't imagine those two boys being Baptists, because you can't get Baptists to get together on anything. <laughs> Don't bow your head, it ain't time to pray. <laughs> and so they ran together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Did you notice? They didn't go in. They seen the clothes, but they didn't go in. The Bible says in verse number 6, Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulcher, and seeth the linen clothes lying, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in the place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, in which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. And then disciples went away, What in the world is wrong with these boys? Then the disciples went away again under their own home. But I want to deal with verse number 11. It'll be our text tonight. The Bible says, But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. The Bible says, And seeth two angels in white sitting, one on the head, at the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. For the sake of time, you can continue to read down through verse number 18. We'll find out what Mary did and what she seen and what she experienced. And I want to talk to you about one word tonight. Just one word. It is not in our text tonight. But it is an action that, that Mary did. It was something that she did, but the word is not in our text. It is an action that she did. The Bible says she looked in. She stooped down. She was weeping and looked into the sepulcher. The only way that Mary could have seen what she saw, she had to linger. She had to linger. And that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. The word linger. 
Let's pray. Father, Lord Jesus, I pray, God, that now, by the power of the Holy Ghost of God, yes, God, help them. God, that you just touch every home and every family, God, that's represented in this place. And God, I pray, God, that your servant, God, tonight, Father, I pray that you'd anoint my lips of clay. I pray, Father, that you'd mold me and make me in what you'd have me to do and say, God, tonight. And God, I pray, Father, God, that God, something would be said. The Word of God would find a lodging place, God, in the hearts and minds of people. Some crevice, God, that maybe you could get into, that maybe, God, that not even another person. But God, I pray that the Holy Ghost of God would find a crack, a crevice, God, to be able to find a lodging place where the Word of God could uh, to multiply. God, that it'd be a seed that would be sown. God, that in the days to come, the weeks that pass, God, maybe the months, even the years, God, that God, that the Holy Ghost of God would water that seed and He'd br bring and multiply. God, that it be for your glory and for your honor. God, I thank you, God, for this opportunity. And God, I pray, God, that you'd touch this church and touch the dear pastor, his family, everyone, God, that supports and stands behind the pastor. I pray, God, that you'd bless them richly, abundantly, above all that we can even think or ask. God, tonight, God, if you don't show up, God, if you don't touch us, God, we would leave this place the same way that we came in. But God, I pray, Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost of God, that, God, that you touch every home and every life, God, that's in here. And I pray, God, that we'd leave differently than the way we come. God, help us not just to go through the motions. God, help us not just to come and hear some songs. And God, sing the songs of Zion. Nothing wrong with that, God. But God, help us to come every time we come to the house of God to hear the Word of God preached and the songs of Zion sung. God, help us, God, to linger long enough to find what you'd have us to leave with tonight. Help us not to leave too early. But God, help us to hear you, God, tonight. God, you're not, you said in your word you'd not be in the earthquake or the lightning or the thunder, but God, you said you'd be in the still small voice. I pray, God, that you'd speak to us in a very special way, God, tonight on this first night of meeting. And God, we'll love you and we'll thank you for all that you do for us. We'll bow and we'll ahead and give you praise and glory. In Christ's name we pray and God's people say it. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Verses 10, 11, and 12. The Bible says, The disciples went away again in their own home, but Mary stood without in the sepulcher weeping. Verse number 12, she seen two angels sitting in white, one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. That word linger is what she did. You have to understand, Mary was a very special person to Jesus. She's very special. But before we move on, before I get ahead of myself, that's the word that we want to deal with tonight, that word linger. I want you to get that in your head. I want you to get that in your heart. I want you to get that in your mind. I want you to go to bed with it. I want you to get up in the morning with it. And when you come back tomorrow night, I want you to be thinking about that word linger. I don't want you to forget that word linger. Because if you don't linger, by the way, now don't take God, don't take the blood of Jesus to save us. It don't take uh, three or four weeks to be born again. The Bible says instantaneously we're born right. again. As yeah. soon as the Holy Ghost of God convicts us of our sin and we are wounded by the Holy Ghost of God, we're convicted, we see ourselves in that sin, and as soon as you take that first step out of your pew, you're saved long before you ever get to a, uh, an altar of repentance. That's just the gravy when we get to the altar. That first step, man, we have already repented, man. We are already sorry for what we have done against right. God. Amen. Right, sure. And so, it don't take God no month to save us. That's right, man. Mm -hmm. But now, after we get saved, it takes, I don't know about you, but the, I, I still have some rough edges. I don't think I'm totally sanctified quite yet. Just let somebody pull out in front of me. <laughs> Let somebody linger a little bit too long in front of me. <laughs> Let me have a long day. Let somebody, I didn't have but one nerve and they got on it. <laughs> that word linger means to stay on, to dwell, <clears throat> to slow down, 
That's what that word linger means. And Mary Magdalene did something that had not that, that I had noticed before as I read this scripture. I mean, we, we study the Word of God and then we go back over Scripture and all of a sudden we find something new. And I knew the story. I'd read this story multiple times. But the Holy Ghost of God showed me something that I hadn't seen before. This historical event of the Lord Jesus Christ being raised from the grave. We all know it. We've all heard it. We preach it on Easter. We've seen movies about it. But tonight, I want to deal with Mary and what she did. I think it's very important that we see what she did. Because I think it's a very valuable lesson that we can learn for what she did. I believe if we can apply it to our lives on a regular basis and when we come to the house of God and not be in such a hurry. We're in uh, such a hurry sometimes to leave. Sometimes we don't linger long enough at the altar. We don't linger long enough to fellowship. And she lingered at the tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice the disciples came and they left. She could have left just like the disciples. But why did Mary stay? Have you, ever, have you ever been reading the Bible and all of a sudden you come across something and you go, hmm, I wonder why that happened. And then you get down on your hands and knees and say, God, why did that happen? Why did that turn out? Why, why did you make a big fish for Jonah to be in? Why, why couldn't you just make something else, an elephant or whatever? I mean, why, why, why couldn't you just call it a whale? Man. But he said, a fish. They said, well, he said, a fish. That means he could have made a catfish big enough. Any kind of fish. A brim. Man. A rainbow trout. Big enough to swallow him. And by the way, that's who we're talking about tonight, are we? Right. I mean, he is God. He did create everything yes. else. Amen. He can do what he wants to do, Amen. have the way he wants to do it, Amen. as long as he needs to do it. Uh, right. Because he's God. He started off. And by the way, my friend, when I say that God stepped out on nothing and created everything, that means he stepped on absolutely nothing. Right. No atoms. Come on. Come on. There's no elements there. Yeah. Amen. The Amen. God that I serve here tonight, he stepped out on nothing right. and created everything. Amen. 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 Come on. That's right. That's the kind of God we serve. Yes. Amen. And you say, well, Brother Franklin, I've got this problem, and I just don't know what... Oh, you've got this problem. Come on. Your problem is very small compared to the bigger God that we have. Amen. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Come on. I mean, really, tomorrow night if you'll come, we'll, we'll talk about the blood a little bit, and the blood has something to say about it. But I'll not preach two sermons tonight. I'll try not to. <laughs> but she lingered. <laughs> and there was a reason why she lingered. God always has a reason. That's right. Yeah. Everything that God puts in the Word of God. And I, I assure you, my friend, God left some things out. Because the Bible says there's some things that's a mystery. So that tells me, Brother Mike, that God left it up to us to kind of fill in the gap and to get our curiosity to the point to where, man, I just don't want to miss heaven because there's some things that God left out and I won't know what God left out because it must have been real special. Right. Yeah, that's Mom. right. Because there's some special stuff that he put in the Word of God. Right. From Genesis to Revelation, my friend. I mean, it's a supernatural book. There's all kinds of supernatural things that happen in the Word of God. And God said, there's some things that's a mystery. And I left some stuff out. I want to make it to heaven. And I want to see what God left out. Amen. Right. Oh, man. But she lingered. She lingered. You have to understand. There's some reason why Mary lingered. Mary had been delivered from demons. That's another word, dear God, you send the Baptist church. Everybody gets all funny looking. They yeah. get their faces all 
square. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's in the Bible. It's an amazing thing. You say something about demons, all of a sudden, man, he's getting ready to cast out somebody. I ain't want to cast out no devils. I'm not here. No, you do all that you want to. But I have an older brother. My eldest brother. He'll take care of all the demons for me. That's right. Wow. Man. But she'd been delivered from demons, my friend. Demonic control. So she had a love for the Lord Jesus Christ that many, my friend, did not understand. I don't know about you, but I've been seeing some people that have been delivered from drugs, from alcohol, and, and that's a demonic control, my friend. Right. And they have been completely cleaned up. Oh. And the power of God has delivered them. And my friend, when people have some things that they have been delivered from, oh. there is a special love, my friend, right. for their yes, Savior sir. that you don't Amen. understand. Amen. And I don't understand. And I don't, know, I don't want to understand. You know why? Oh. Because that's their own personal relationship. Right. And you yes. can't love God enough. Come on. Amen. 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 That's you good. can't love him enough. You can't outgive him. Amen. You can't outwork him. Amen. It would seem like to me that saved folk would want to do something for God. Come on. Right. Come on. I mean, he is our Savior. Amen. He right. did save us from hell. Amen. Right. Amen. I need to move on. I don't have but two points. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be humble. Go ahead. Come on. Come on. I'm the, I understand that I'm supposed to be a little straight, Go ahead, and, but I have two points. Come on. I mean, I could have several points, but God said, there's four points to this, but I just don't want you to preach but two. Come on. She had been under demonic control, so she had a special relationship. <laughs> she had something to be thankful for. She had something to be grateful for. She had been possessed. And now, my friend, she has been set free. Amen. And thank God for freedom. Amen. I ain't what I ought to be. Come but, on. honey, I ain't what I used to be. Amen. Amen. Come on. I'll say that again just to shame the devil. I ain't what I ought to be. But my daughter's back there, and she knows, my friend, I ain't what I used to be. Amen. Amen. I could drop my plow right there and preach, but I don't. She had a reason to love him. She had a reason to love him. It was obvious that she had an intimate, close relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. What about us? Come on. What about us? You say, Brother Father, I'm just not getting my prayers as well. How intimate and how close are you to God? Come on, come on. Yeah. Just how close. On. You can't get too close to him now. That's right. You say, brother, I, I, I just come to church and it just seems like that I just, uh, the, well, the music's made, just, they, they don't have a piano, they, they don't have this, and it just, uh, well, how about, how about just you and God getting a hold of one another? Amen. 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 How about coming to church every once in a while and not worrying about nobody else, Amen. but just your relationship, Amen. your relationship, Amen. your relationship, Amen. just you and Him. Amen. 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 I mean, it's you and him before you get to church. Amen. It ought to be you and him before you get here and That's after you leave. It. Come on. I mean, church is just great big. I mean, really, it's just a, a, a pep rally. You're right. Come on. <coughs> it's just a pep rally. Remember pep rallies? I play football. I love pep rallies. You know why I have a jersey on? <laughs> number 10. I was number 10. <laughs> Man, I, they get the band, <laughs> and about that time the crowd is a screaming. I'm in the in the hall. I'm going, man. I'm getting ready to hit somebody tonight. <laughs> I'm getting ready to run past somebody and just be looking at them. <laughs> and man, really, man, when all that, man, we all come in, man. Everybody's just screaming and carrying on. That's the way church is supposed to be. Right. Amen. Right. That's right. Come on. Amen. Come on. I mean, there's there's got to be some preaching that's got to go on. Man. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. If you ever prepare yourself long before you ever get to church, on. won't nobody have to pull you yes. up. They ain't going to have to no, drown you. Right. If you've been reading your Bible, on, and if you've been right. praying, right. and if you've been listening to the right kind of stuff, on, you're yeah. gone. Yeah. Yeah. You'll yeah. be on G yeah. when yeah. you yeah. get yeah. to the house of God. Yeah. Amen. 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 It's good preaching. Amen. I mean, my grandfather, he died when he was uh, 93, 94 years old. And do you understand, when Sunday was over, 
It wasn't over. <laughs> Some folk come to church and they go, Man, Sunday's over. Hey, God, I'm tired. Come on. Yeah. Hey, God, Brother Mike, preach you have to bless God day. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you know I got to go to Walmart and get groceries. <laughs> I got to go eat. And then I got to be back at church early. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody go take him back in the back and talk to him. Amen. I mean, just sling and slot and everything else. <laughs> but when you know what? It wasn't over when, whenever Grandpa got through with Sunday. It was only the beginning. Right. Because Amen. Sunday to Grandpa was man. I'm going to see what God's going to do after I prayed all week. He well, came with an expectation. Come on. Amen. Because he had specifically told God what he wanted to see on Sunday. You're right. Man. He, and the first person that was on his list was not the Sunday school teacher. It wasn't the choir director. It was Come the on. man of God. Amen. 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 And when he got down on his hands and knees uh, on Monday morning uh, and in Monday lunch uh, and Monday night, uh, he is a praying for the people of God uh, and the oh. power of God uh, and the preacher, my friend. Uh, and he prayed all week. Uh, so when Sunday morning come, he is a grinning from here and going, I wonder what God's going to answer today. Oh, Amen. 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 That's good. He came Amen. with an expectation, my friend. Yeah. Right. I got to get back on point. Reach. Go ahead. Come on. Let me get back on She had been possessed of the devil, and now she has been set free. So she had a reason to love him. She had an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And she lingered at the tomb to see him one more time. One more time. I just wonder if we'd come with the expectation just to see God and the power of the Holy Ghost of God move one more time. Man, right. Man. People that linger are people that God has done something special for. Yeah. People that come to church five minutes after 11 Come on. and leave five minutes till. Come on. Apparently, God hadn't done a whole lot for them. Come on. I know it got real quiet right there. Oh, yes. Amanda, get my keys. Go start the truck. I'm going to have to slip out the back. It's locked. <laughs> I was about like that old boy. He, uh, he was up in the mountains of Virginia. And him and his family was a singing. And he was in one of them, you know, flipping churches, man. man. I've been in them, man. The jumping pews. They ain't no longer jumping pews. I mean, I've jumped pews myself. I've run the aisles before. But when they get them boxes out, I get literal. I get just a little. I get just a little nervous. Just nervous. And about that time, they got that box out on that fella. And all of a sudden, it had holes in the top, holes in the side, from air holes. And he reached over and talked to the pastor and said, Pastor. You have a back door. He said, no, sir. He said, if you open that box, you're going to have one. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Brother Fred, have you ever been one of them? No. Yeah, I have. Yeah. And I was nervous then. <laughs> I'm nervous talking about it. <laughs> I mean, I was at, in Pulaski, Virginia. Pulaski. I can take you to the place, I promise you. And about that time, us, us gospel singers... And us evangelists, we get to the church, have to get there early, have to set all of our stuff up. And if the church ain't open, we've got to figure out how to get in there. Since we don't have a key. Sometimes I've had to ask God to forgive me as a thief. I wasn't a thief, didn't take anything, but I broke in. I climbed through the windows. I went through the attic. I, I don't want to talk no more, I'm going to incriminate myself. <laughs> I crawled through this window, and it was cold. It was it was the air conditioning. Uh, it was a two, double window, air conditioning on one side. I opened the window and crawled in. Cold in that room. It's August. Cold in one room in the entire church. <laughs> air conditioning is not on in the rest of the church. They got they don't have central air. I'm I'm not thinking. I'm going to get my stuff set up. 
I unlock the front door, set all my stuff up, man. They come in, man. They got the long dresses on, dear God, and the buns up in the air, you know. They ready to come to church now. They mean business. Son, from the first note, dear God, it was wild as a buck. Son, as they're running in a shouting about that time, they went to that room. <laughs> and I don't know if it was the Holy Ghost or just... <laughs> But some spoke to me and said, they're going to get that box. <laughs> I remember the box. I'm like, what in the world is this box just doing right here in the middle of the room? That's right in the middle of the room. I'm not paying attention. All of a sudden, they go to that room and they get that box. And they bring that box out. I whispered to the preacher. I said, preacher, I'm not one of those. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? I said, I'm not one of those. I said, there's... That I just don't like snakes, and if there's snakes in that box, you can send me my check in the mail. <laughs> I mean, please don't get that. I got children here. <laughs> Amen. I, and I promise you, if you vote in that box, my wife is on stage, you ain't gonna like what she does. <laughs> and it ain't gonna be too holy. <laughs> I wish some of y'all would smile. <laughs> What's this? She lingered. So she was, people that linger, guess what? They, they, God's done something very special for them. And so, they, she, was, she was wanting to see her Savior one more time. <clears throat> and people that, they linger at church and they linger in the altar. They're waiting on God to do something supernatural for them because they need not a miracle today. They need a, they need a miracle now. That very moment. Who believes that God is a God that's an instantaneous job God? Amen. Do you understand that God can do it just like that? Amen. 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 A lot of people, they'll pray for three or four weeks and all we've got to do is ask God to do it because that's the way God does things. That's the kind of business our God is in doing things. Because His time is not like our time. He said, our, my ways are higher than your ways. That's right. Man, preacher. So you say, oh, brother, brother, He didn't do it. Well, then what you need to do is linger mm -hmm. until He does. Yeah. Man, that's good. Yeah. Man, that's right. Don't give up today just because He didn't do it today. Come on. Yeah. Don't give up tomorrow or next week. Just linger a while. Amen. That's good. Amen. They remember. They remember what God had done for them in the past. People that linger, they remember the goodness and the grace and the mercy and the supernatural things that God did for them yesterday and the day before and way back a month ago or two years or ten years ago. And if God did it then, He hasn't changed. That's right. He's still the same God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says He is a God that He changes not. And remember, they remember what God did in the past. And you know what? I believe Mary did too. Mm -hmm. I believe that's why she lingered. She wanted to see him one more time because she did remember, man, what he had said. And she took her Savior at his word. I mean, she watched him die. She watched him. They wrapped him in grave clothes. They, they put him in the sepulcher. They put him in the tomb. She watched, stood by and watched all of that. And she came to the tomb, the Bible says, weeping. Weeping. You know why? She had lost her best friend. <coughs> her Savior. She had lost him. And she was afraid she never going to get seen ever I'm going to tell you something, folks. If he ever becomes your best friend, when he don't talk and he don't speak and you don't feel him, Come on. Try it. you'll linger long yeah. enough to find your friend again. Amen. 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 That's good. There's two things, my friend, I want to talk to you tonight about and we'll be done. First of all, Two things that I believe we can find here in our scripture that can be supernaturally and can supernaturally change your life tonight if we'll just do what Mary did. Do you understand? Because of what she did when she lingered, she saw what others did not see. She saw what others did not see. 
She said, Preacher, what did she see? I'm glad you asked. Watch this. Watch this. She saw what the Bible says in verse number 12, and see if two angels in white sitting one on the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had laid. Simon and John had already been there at the tomb and they saw the grave clothes and they looked and they left and went to their home. The disciples came and looked and left and went their own way. But Mary, my friend, she lingered at the tomb. She saw what others did not get to see. Right. <clears throat> she stayed long enough, my friend, to see. She saw angels. So angels, I remember uh, so many biographies by so many preachers from long ago, in 50 and 60 and 70, maybe 100 years ago, my friend, as they prayed all night long and prayed all week and fast for two and three days, and they saw supernatural things that God done. Yeah. Why? Come on. They lingered. They slowed down long enough to try their very best to get on God's time frame. She saw angels, my friend. The disciples came, they looked in, they left, but she saw angels. She got to see what others didn't get to see. She said, experienced a supernatural event. She saw angels. The disciples, guess what they seen? Great clothes. Yep. <coughs> they came. He ain't here. Here's his clothes. That's his clothes. They stole him. Let's go look for him somewhere else. He didn't say anything about that, did he, in the scripture? And Mary. And I'm sure it was something like this. She had remembered what the Lord Jesus Christ had done for her. And he had, she had seen the miracle that the Lord Jesus had done. And she had experienced, my friend, the supernatural power of God in her own life. And said, none of this makes sense. It just ain't logical. He's got to be here somewhere. And all of a sudden, she stayed long enough, all of a sudden, there's them angels. Have you ever been like this before? I don't know, maybe I'm just different from anybody else. But have you ever got down and prayed, Brother Mike, and you thought that the heavens was brass? And it seemed like God was a thousand miles away? And you got down and you prayed for your best friends, you prayed for your wife, you prayed for your husband, you prayed for your kids, man, you prayed for preaching, you prayed, start praying, and it just seemed like nothing, man. No feeling. You're tired. You're wore out. And the old devil says, Maybe you, maybe you feel something tomorrow. And have you ever just... It's another, it's another term that just irritates Baptists. Now I'm Baptist. Don't get me wrong. But the old... Well, Grandma and Grandpa said sometimes you just have to pray through. Pray through. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, yeah. You pray through the muck and the mire Come and the, the fatigue until God shows up. I mean, he did walk up all the way to Calvary's mountain. He did lay his life down. I mean, really, if you study anything about the Word of God, and if you study the Word of God at all, I mean, it would seem like to me that our little problems and our little heartaches and our little troubles seems fruit, fruitile, really, compared to what the martyrs did in the, in the Word of God. They were thrown in snake pits and they were crucified upside down. They were burned at the stake. And here we come, and we come home from work, or we come home from church, or we come home from the... And, and it's like, oh my gosh, i got to study my Bible five minutes or the preacher's going to kill me. If you don't do it for him, surely don't do it for him. Man. Don't do it just because he said so. Come on. Come on. If you don't do it because of him, you might as well go and take a shower. 
Because that's what it's about. It ain't about him. It's about him. Amen. Amen. You see, you can't get to God. He has to come to you. He's too far away for you to get to him. You say, Brother Fraley, now you're talking about no. Spiritually. You can pray all you want to pray in the morning, but then you got to go through this world during the day. And all of that muck and all that mire and all that junk that you come in contact with, it separates you just a little bit. You can pray half the night, but that mess that you come encounter with during the day, it's going to separate you just a little bit. And if you go days, weeks, and months, then this is what happens. You're right, right. Man. Yeah, come on. That's right. And then when the preacher gets up here and he says something that just kind of hits you the wrong way, well, I don't show him. You know. <laughs> yeah. And then you walk out mad. Don't bow your head. It ain't time to pray. Come on. Come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Amen, Brother Father. You preaching good, son. <laughs> Go ahead. She right. lingered, my friend, and she saw what others did not get to see. She experienced something supernatural. She saw angels, and the disciples saw grave clothes. And people that linger and hang around and slow down and dwell usually receive something supernatural right. and a supernatural visitation from a holy God. Why? Right. We put the time in, we sacrifice, and we obey instead of sacrifice. We obey. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. Yep. Man. Most Baptists, they do more sacrificing than listening. That's why we can't get no word to God. I gotta sacrifice. I gotta get up. Praise God. I gotta go hand out tracks, brother. Oh my Lord Jesus, it's gonna be Saturday, dear God. I got the track to take care of. I'm supposed to go play ball. And that's all the preacher wants to do is bless God, go hand out track and go and soul with it. I mean, only dear boy. Come on. All we do is go to church and God. Came to them, came to the mechanic pass person, go somewhere. <laughs> that's good preaching. <laughs> Mumble and complain and mumble and complain. <laughs> Don't he know we got a life too? <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm a pastor. See, I, I hear all that stuff. I be sitting in my office. They have a fellowship hall and they come to the kitchen. And they don't know I'm in the office. And I got a real thin door. <laughs> I hear all that stuff. And this is what I do sometimes. I did this one just a couple, about a couple months ago. I opened the door and said, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Their eyes got about this big. <laughs> and a little girl standing there, Preacher, they didn't know you was in your office. <laughs> I said, Darling, I know. The Sundays are coming. <laughs> Watch this. People that then linger and they hang around and they slow down long enough to hear the voice of God normally and pray through the tough time normally get to see something supernatural that God does. Lingering people find something special that others did not stay long enough to find. She's seen things that others did not get to see. And one of the reasons that she got to see what others did not get to see is because she came weeping. She humbled herself. <clears throat> she had something to weep about. Her best friend was gone. Her first love. The one that had done so much for her that no one else could do. People that linger stay with the Lord. They hang out with the Lord Jesus. When everybody else is gone, they don't just try to find somebody else to hang out with. He did say he'd never leave us nor forsake us. That's right. He yeah. said he is our best friend. Oh, man. So when everybody else leaves, he ain't going nowhere. That's right, man. He's going nowhere. I mean, when was the last time that you just hung out with him? 
Nobody, not the preacher, not your friend, not your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Just, when was the last time that you just hung out with him? I mean, when was the last time that you just got down on your hands and knees and didn't ask God for nothing? Come so on. many times we come to God and we got this and then yeah. we got that. Yeah. We're always asking God for this, that, and the other. Come on. It's like we got a whole list, a Christmas list. This is what we want, Jesus. <laughs> Can you wrap this up and put it in the bow and under my tree? Because, God, I need this and I need that. He said He'd meet our need according to His riches and glory. That's right. Amen. So now He's meeting our need according to His riches. Go home and chew on that for a while. <laughs> you ever thought about that? He said he'd meet our need, not according to man's riches, but his riches. Man's. And he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Man. And your problem is your bills has not been paid yet. Maybe the reason you ain't lingered like Mary has. I mean, I remember my friend on the road and we had that great old big 38-foot coach, man, and my wife would write out the check and not have a dime of money in the bank. Scare me to death! <laughs> I mean, I went to, we was in Perry, Florida one time and we met this 88-year-old woman. She's as frail and but godly as she can be. She laid her hands on my head and began to pray. I mean, she just walked up out of nowhere, man. And grabbed me by the head in a Baptist church. She's an old-fashioned Baptist. And she just began to pray. I thought, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, you know, I wasn't slain in the spirit, but dear God, I did get weak at the knees. I know a woman had God on her. And she told me, she said, everything's going to be all right, preacher. It's going to be all right. She just prayed, prayed, prayed. Several months later, we was at home. And the power was getting ready to get cut off. That day at 5 o'clock. You know, you go to some churches and you get a lot of love. You go for a love offering. And you get love and no offering. Or you get a whole lot of love and a little bit of offering. And that's the way it had been. It had been so dry spot. We had seen many folks get saved. But the finances was in tough shape. I mean, it was tough. And we was wringing our hands and we wasn't going to... When you say you're going to live by faith and not by sight, you don't go run around saying, Hey, Dad, can you pay the power bill? Mom, can you pay the power bill? <coughs> don't get all quiet on me. So if we're going to believe God, He is Dad. Man. Yeah. Right. And sometimes we need to go to God just like He is our dad. Yeah. Because He said He's our Father. And this is the attitude that I have now. When I live by faith, this is the attitude I got. I said, oh dad, cars broke down. Uh, you, got, you got a repair bill. You meant it. And guess what? You ain't going to find God that don't pay His bills. That's right. Man, preacher. God will always pay His bills. That's right. Man. Yeah. And so I learned to say, God, the power bill's due. Did you know it was due? I don't hear nothing from God like He's going to answer. Like He didn't know the power bill was due. <laughs> and we knew that about 2 o'clock, the mail was going to run. There's going to be some more bills in there. Now you listen to me. And about that time I went to the mailbox and there was one little letter. And it was from that lady. I'm like, well, that's a blessing. I get a letter. And all of a sudden when I opened it up, it was like three or four pages. And in the middle of all that, there was a check. And I began to read that letter and I began to cry. I got about first through the first page. I had to wipe my tears because I couldn't see. And at the end, she signed, she's at the end of, right at the end, she said, the Lord put this exact amount on my heart. It was within pennies of what my power bill was. 
No te enteres. And I dropped my little old head in shame. I said, God, I'm sorry. My little old power bill. And a God that hung the universe. Like that's a problem to him. She came weeping. And people that linger will always come weeping. Why? Because there's two reasons why somebody weeps. For joy or for sorrow. And she had a broken heart. She wasn't sure if she was even going to be able to see him ever again. But I believe somewhere down in her heart, I got a promise. She came weeping, but also she came working. Watch this. The Bible says she stooped down and looked into the tomb. Do you know what she did? She made an effort. She came working. She came weeping. She made an effort. She just didn't stop and look in. She made an effort to stay. She had a desire to see Him one more time. And she received something very special from God. People that will always make an effort and they'll always have a desire and they'll come and humble themselves and they come weeping before God and they humble themselves before the mighty hand of God, they will always receive something special. Right, right. And she made an effort. Matter of fact, she went the extra mile. She went the extra mile. Sometimes, if you go the extra mile, sometimes people don't really actually see the extra mile. And that's very hard, personally, when you go the extra mile and you do the little extra and you make a little bit more effort and you don't get an attaboy and the preacher don't see it, the choir director don't see it, Mama don't see it. Daddy don't see it. Nobody sees it. But you know you did it. And you went the extra. Over and above. Beyond the call of duty. And nobody pats you on the back. <clears throat> That's where you got to get to the point. That where you don't need man's praise. You're not doing it for man. You're doing it for him. Amen. 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 She wasn't doing it for the disciples. She was doing it for him. She lingered it for him. She came weeping and she came working, my friend. She made an effort, a valid effort. But watch this. When you, when you come weeping and when you come working, she came weary. It had been a long night, Brother Mike. Long night. I may make this. I'm sure she walked back and forth, man. Not to. She come the first day and the second day. And that's all she could do is cry. She's weary. And people sometimes they get so weary. It's hard to make an effort. It's hard to go the extra mile when you're tired. She was weary. It had been the worst night of all. But she received something special from God. Do you understand sometimes our tears is the only thing that God sees. And He understands our tears. People that linger will be willing to cry and shed some tears and work and even sometimes when we're weary we try to go the extra mile God will always give you something supernatural a visitation from God in your weary moments your weeping moments and your working moments God is looking for some people 
He's looking for some saints of God that'll go the extra mile. Won't give up. They don't give out. They don't give in. They just keep on. Something that down inside of you has got to overcome the weariness, the weakness, and the temptation. You have to get to the point, like Mary did, that you're willing to linger just a little bit longer to see what God is going to do. And I assure you, my friend, if you make that type of effort for God, He will let you know when to leave. He will let you know when to get up from prayer. He will let you know when it's enough. And when your family is supposed to be here and the work of God is supposed to be here. If you'll demonstrate that type of effort and desire to God, you'll be able to separate and plan everything that you need to plan and it'll go right hand in hand with the will of God. And Mary, Mary, man, she made an effort. But lastly, I got to hurry. She saw what others didn't get to see. But she received something that nobody else got to receive. Nobody else got to receive it but her. He said, Preacher, what did she get? Oh, well, she received a whole lot. I mean, she got to see Jesus. And the others didn't get to see him. Because the Bible says that all of a sudden he shows up. I mean, just poof, out of nowhere. Here he comes. And about that time, she didn't know who he was at first. And the Bible says she, she suspected it was the gardener that was tending the cemetery there. Oh, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You don't want to miss this. God help if you missed everything that I've said, please don't miss this. Watch this. My gosh. I just felt Holy Ghost bumps come up my spine. The Bible says that when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. Knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she supposed to be the gardener. Said unto him, Sir, if thou be born him thence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. He didn't call a woman, did she? Mm -hmm. Called her by her name. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And just as soon as he spoke her name, look what the Bible says. She says, Master, it's you. It's you. Them old boys, they done been at the house. Them disciples done come and left. But she got to experience and she got to receive something that they did not get to receive and they didn't get to experience. He spoke her and spoke her name and he, she knew exactly who he was. Amen. Oh, it gets better than that. Oh, it gets better than that. You think, well, dear God, she says, Master, it's you. It's you. It ain't the gardener. It's my Savior. She gets excited. Dear God, it's a wonder. She didn't take a running fit and fall out and just pass out right there. <laughs> but what's this? As the old mountain preacher says, it gets gooder and gooder as you read. Yeah. <laughs> she says, Mary. She turned to herself and said unto him, Rabbi. Just called Master. Said Master. And Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. For I'm not yet ascended to my father, but go whew, to my brother and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to God and to your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. She had seen him. Hey! Hey, boys! I 
back and just see her now. Dear God, man. She's a crying. She's got all of her makeup already. I mean, she's done crying all of her makeup. Her hair's all frizzed out, man. Uh, dear God, dear God, half of her clothes is off. She's a running through the woods. She's a running down the street. She said, I've seen him. I've seen him. I've seen him. He's alive and well. Amen. Dear God, he's alive, boy. Amen. And they looked at her like she's crazy. There, she ain't been delivered. That's them demons again. <laughs> About like a bunch of deacons. <laughs> Mary, are you sure that you said, we went and we didn't see nothing but his grave clothes. And I'm sure the tears began to roll down her cheeks. And she said, you just didn't linger long enough. Mm. And she hadn't bit more got that out of her mouth, Brother Mike. He don't even open the door. He didn't knock on the door and say, I'm coming in. He just steps into the room, through the wall, through the door. That's right. Yeah. And said, boys, she seen me first. And I come just to prove that she did. She got to deliver the message, the gospel, to those disciples. The good news that he was alive. May I ask you a question here tonight? When was the last time you lingered? When was the last time you just lingered? Just lingered. My grandparents taught me a, valuable, a lot of valuable lessons. And I remember something that I, I'm doing a, a little series at our church on Sunday mornings. No one ever cared for me <clears throat> like Jesus. No one ever cared. I mean, he cares for us as a gardener that tends to his garden attentively. He cares for us as an eyelid cares for the eye instantaneously. I mean, not, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. Can I give you this story and we'll close? My grandmother, she had a green thumb. I mean, literally it wasn't green, but she could grow anything. Ethel could grow anything. That was her name. I mean, you don't name your children Ethel no more. That's, it. That's like... You know, I tried, I wanted the name Hannah Grace, you know, I told, I told her, I want to, I, I want to name her Grace, that's an old woman's name, I still got my way, I named her Hannah, it means Grace, ha, <laughs> <laughs> and so my grandmother, she had, she had a, she, she, she had a green thumb, she, she, she could grow anything, man, I mean anything, I mean if it could be half dead, she could bring it back to life, she's a miracle worker when it comes to a plant. A fly or anything. And, and, and if you go down Costco Road and you go to our house and you got Mama's house and then you got grandparents, my grandparents' house and there's a little screened in porch and, and, and during the spring and the summer and the fall, man, all of our plants was on the... I mean, you had to walk around stuff to get to the swing to get all them plants and flowers. And when I was small, you know, when I was, you know, eight, ten years old, you know, they used to pick me up, you know, Mom and Dad worked the cotton mill. And they'd pick me up and they'd take me out to Grandpa's house and they'd put me in Grandpa's bed or they'd put me in my grandmother's bed. And Grandmother's bed, her bedroom was right there. I mean, you walked in the living room, it's right there on the left. And it was adjacent to the screen in the porch. And Grandmother, she got up, she cooked breakfast for Grandpa. And then when she went and finished the, and she finished the dishes, she went to take care of her plants. And she did that to almost lunchtime. Each and every one of them. She had named them one by one. She had the pots all different colors. All of it color coordinated. With the color of the flower. And they all had names. And one morning, Brother Mike, I thought my grandmother had lost her mind. I mean, she has really lost her mind now. 
She's out on the screens and ports talking to them plants. <laughs> calling them by name. I'm like, should I tell my mom this? <laughs> should I warn my mother that her daughter has lost her mind? I'm just a little boy and I'm going, she's crazy. <laughs> She'd ling around in flowers, man, one by one. And she'd spend some time with each and every one of them. Several weeks went by, and I heard my grandmother again. She woke me up weeping. I'm like, what's wrong with Mama? Did Papa hurt her feelings? I'll kick him in his shin. <laughs> so I got us eased up out of the bed. And I could hear her talking to them plants. Like she's really lost it now. And all of a sudden, I peeked around the corner. And she had this one plant that she had separated out, all of them, set it up on another little pedestal a little bit higher where she could get to it real good. She had a little stool that she was sitting right down beside of it. And she was a talking to it. She had a set of clippers. And it was a little rusty. And you could hear, man, back and forth with them clippers. <laughs> About that time, I heard her say these words. Now, honey, I'm going to have to prune you. I'm going to have to get out some of these dead limbs. And this is going to hurt you. But if I don't do it, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. But if I get some of these limbs away, it'll help you grow. And she had a little white hanky. And she'd go, and she'd say, I'm sorry. She'd take that little white hanky and take the moisture and wipe it right off the edge. <coughs> I'm sorry. And she'd cry a little bit. And she'd wipe the end where the moisture was off the end of the plant, off the branch. Years later, that came to me. She lingered with them plants. But sometimes God sends some stuff to us. And all he's doing is pruning. <coughs> this is going to hurt. I know this problem and this situation is going to hurt. But it's not, it's not the wrath of God. But it's going to make you better. Amen. You're going to be able to grow. All I'm doing is pruning you. Because i got something a whole lot better for you. Sometimes we don't linger with God, but God lingers with us. Sometimes God brings stuff to us in certain situations, in certain circumstances that's hard for us. And we don't understand why it happens. And what that does is it forces us to God. It drives us to an altar. Right. You know why? Because all God wants is a relationship with you. That's right. That's, right. that's all. He just wants you to talk to Him. He just wants you to hang out with Him. He really just wants you to linger with Him. I know there may be some people here that's got some things going on in their life that you just don't understand. Maybe what God wants you to do is just linger with Him. You see, Mary saw some things that others didn't get to see because she lingered she experienced some things that no other, no one else got to experience. And she received some things that others did not get to receive. What do you need from the Lord tonight? It's Wednesday night, it's prayer meeting. Done pray. What did you pray about that you want God to answer before the sun comes up in the morning?
What did you ask God to do? And are you willing to linger long enough until God answers that prayer? Maybe not tonight. But if need be, I'm sure that Brother Mike would keep the lights on if he wanted to pray all night. He'd keep the lights on, lock the door, and tell you, lock the door behind you when you leave. Don't you want to linger? Just linger with the Lord a little bit. Can we stand to our feet, Brother Mike, with every head bowed and every eye closed? Really, what do we need? What do you... What are you asking God to do in your life? That you really need God to do it. Really, you need to do it. You need to have God to do it tonight. You need God to do it tonight, not tomorrow. You need an answer tonight. You need an answer tonight, not tomorrow. You need God to put His arms around you tonight and let you know that everything, not just a few things, but what you're praying about, it's going to be all right. Because I have it all under control. It's going to be all right.
than anything. I'm talking about silver and gold, houses and cars. I'd rather have him more than he would rather.